What is the fourth industrial revolution and how did we get here? So real quick, TLDR in a nutshell, the fourth industrial revolution is the confluence of several technologies, namely artificial intelligence, automation, and robotics, quantum computing, which of course is still ramping up, uh, blockchain technologies and cryptocurrency, spatial web and web 3.0, biotech and genetics, and finally nuclear fusion. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, some of these technologies are still ramping up. Some of them are all the rage right now. But basically, these six technological uh, domains are going to be what powers the next century of human advancement. So let's get into it. For a little bit of historical context, I want to tell you about the previous revolutions. And we're going to start all the way back in the Bronze Age. So the Bronze Age, TLDR, if you're not familiar, started about 5,000, 5,500 years ago with the introduction of copper and tin uh, being merged to make bronze. So this allowed us to uh, have better tools, better weapons. Uh, it was also associated with other technological improvements, such as the invention of the wheel and axle. Uh, you might you know, be thinking of uh, chariots that, uh, that the Egyptians used during warfare, uh, but also uh, wheels and axles were used for farming, uh, irrigation, moving uh, dirt around. Uh, also, writing became a really big thing uh, <laughs> around this time. Uh, so whether it was clay tablets or papyrus, Writing was used primarily at first for resource coordination and government functions. Of course, writing also eventually was used for storytelling and records keeping and a few other things. But all this really started about 5,500 years ago, and the, this period of time lasted for about 2,000 years until around 1200 BCE. Now, skipping forward a little bit, ancient Rome. So we uh, fondly remember the Roman Empire for a lot of things, you know, a lot of uh, scandalous affairs and corruption and backstabbing and a lot of really great stories. But they're also remembered for their engineering feats, namely around stoneworking uh, and concrete. Uh, now, above and beyond that, because obviously, you know, the Colosseum is still standing, the Pantheon, many Roman aqueducts and Roman roads. So lots of feats of engineering. Uh, they invented the tread crane, and or I don't know if they invented the tread crane, but basically uh, they made really good use of, of cranes. They also advanced uh, legal systems and calendar systems. So they're really good systems thinkers. Roman law is actually still kind of the foundation of uh, Western law today. Uh, so that's how important that was as an innovation. And then, of course, uh, the Greek and Roman world, they invented what we now today know as philosophy uh, and history. And what I mean by invented is basically brought the, brought the idea of recording all of your thoughts in books <laughs> in order to preserve and transmit across time and history. Moving forward, after the fall of the Roman Empire, there was a brief uh, Dark Ages, but uh, it, was dark, it was anything but dark for the Golden Age of Islam. Uh, and so the uh, Islamic scholars of this period of time, between the 8th and 14th centuries, uh, they were really big into reading and writing. They are actually the ones that preserved all the Greek and Roman writing for us today. Uh, but even bigger was their impact to mathematics. So algebra literally is an Arabic word. Uh, the geometry and algebra that the Arabic scholars uh, contributed in the Golden Age of Islam still underpins all of science and engineering today. Uh, so again, uh, it's been one long continuous thread uh, basically around the Mediterranean. Obviously, this is a very Western-centric view. Uh, the Eastern world had their own, had in, in isolation, in, completely independent from the Western world, had many of the same uh, innovations. So I am, I am very much aware that this is a Mediterranean Western-centric view of engineering and science and technology and the history of industrial revolutions. Uh, moving forward after the golden age of Islam is the Renaissance. So the Renaissance was uh, kicked off when we saw the invention of, an, of a new information technology, the printing press. So the printing press was the first uh, thing that allowed us to mass produce intellectual content. And so <laughs> functionally speaking to the human mind, the printing press is not much different from the internet in that it allows you to mass produce uh textual information. Now, the internet, of course, adds some functional differences, namely that we can transmit it around the globe instantaneously. But from a cultural and intellectual standpoint, they've had roughly the same effect. It's just the internet is bigger and faster. Some other innovations that happened during the Renaissance uh, that are still uh, around today, namely are the banking advancements. 
Uh, and then scientific advancements, um, particularly those developed in the university systems and the guild systems. So basically the modern intelligentsia we see today kind of got started around the 15th century, uh, late 14th and 15th century in Europe. And that sets the stage for uh, going f straight into the first industrial revolution. So now that you're caught up to speed, how did we get from there to here? So the first industrial revolution started in the 18th and 19th centuries, and this saw the first big wave of mechanization and steam power. Now, uh, mechanization and steam power, largely with textiles and food production, these were static steam engines. So it's basically one way to think about it is that building a steam engine that is, sits in one place is a lot easier than building a portable steam engine. So the first industrial revolution was mostly about building larger machines in factories and then, of course, bringing people to work in those factories. And so all the, uh, all the images that you have of smokestacks in old London, that's generally first industrial revolution. Uh, you know, and this was, this was marked by a move from the more agrarian lifestyles to, uh, to moving into the cities. Now, that being said, there is a lot of parallels, uh, parallels between the first and second industrial revolution, which we'll get to right now. So the second industrial revolution is the 19th and early 20th century, so much more modern. And so the primary difference between the first industrial revolution and the second industrial revolution is the introduction of electricity and portable steam engines. So this is where you start to see steamships becoming really popular, uh, steam locomotives. Now, of course, steam engines um, have been around since the 1700s, but it wasn't until they were scaled up. Um, and also the, with the introduction of internal combustion engines around the early uh, the turn of the century. Uh, but with the advent of electricity and modern chemistry, this gave us a whole lot of uh, new technological capabilities, such as telegraphs and telephones, uh, which uh, completely renovated the way that we were transmitting information to each other. Uh, also, with the industrial scale, we saw the emergence of modern corporations. So until then, all you had were smaller uh, you know, factory bosses, right? You had, you had small-time capitalists who were able to you know, build and run a factory, but usually that was the size of a business. But with the second industrial revolution, with mass transit, such as with uh, rail and steamships, corporations started getting much larger in scale, which meant that they had to have uh, much more sophisticated uh, bookkeeping and, uh, you know, international law and interstate law uh, had to be advanced in order to match this. And during this period of time, this is when we saw the rail, coal, and steel barons uh, that were infamous during the early 20th century. The third industrial revolution is the move from analog to digital. So this is the primary change here where no longer are we dealing strictly with, uh, you know, fire-based, um, you know, uses of fuel and energy. We're now in the nuclear age. We have computers. We have digital processing. This is the origin, uh, the origination of the internet, of email, information networks, and also the rise of consumer electronics. Uh, consumer electronics were no longer the domain of business, you know, IBM international business machines. Uh, this is where we saw the rise of, uh, radio, TV, uh, computers, game consoles, all kinds of stuff, VCRs in the home. Uh, and this, uh, this explosion of information availability allowed for increasingly sophisticated global networks, such as global supply chain, uh, sorry, global supply chains, as well as, uh, international uh, conglomerate corporations. Until this time, it just really wasn't possible to have gigantic megacorps because information was just too slow. So moving forward, now we're at the fourth industrial revolution. So the fourth industrial revolution arguably started within the last five to 10 years, uh, particularly with the ramp up of AI and robotics. Uh, AI really has taken off in the last couple of years. Quantum computing is still kind of in a nascent phase, so we'll see how, how fast quantum computing ramps up, but the investment is there. Uh, you know, East, Eastern world and Western world are both investing a lot in quantum computing because uh, the dream is that quantum supremacy will create an exponential speed up of all kinds of things, such as material science, medicine, um, and, and possibly even solving nuclear fusion and other things. Uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency technologies... These have been around for a little while, and they're starting to, to uh, mature. Uh, so, for instance, what I mean by that is that the tech giants like IBM and VMware and others 
are starting to provide uh, enterprise-grade blockchain solutions. It's no longer just the domain of experimental open source stuff. These are enterprise-grade solutions that are going to be uh, supported by professional engineers and tremendous amounts of investment, uh, which means that the technology is going to become more uh, robust and reliable and trustworthy. Spatial Web and Web 3.0. So these are technologies that are based on the saturation of Internet uh, signals and other wireless uh, uh, network signals, such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So basically, you have uh, sensors and Internet everywhere. So now what do you do with it? You have a tremendous amount of information and, and presence, uh, omnipresence of Internet. And then, the, of course, that extends the reach of artificial intelligence and other things. We still don't really know how this is going to play out. Uh, but basically, information everywhere, uh, everything can be instrumented and, and, um, and parameterized. Uh, biotech and genetics, uh, some of my recent videos, I've talked about how uh, these, uh, these technologies are advancing. So, for instance, technologies like AlphaFold and proprietary platforms are already helping with drug discovery. As, and not just, not just the drug discovery, but the end-to-end -end process of drug approvals. And so when you have all these working together, we're going to start to see compounding returns. And then finally, nuclear fusion is another uh, thing that's up and coming. The investment is there already. It's in the billions of dollars. So it's only a matter of time before we solve this problem. Now, of course, it would be incorrect to assume or assert that nuclear fusion uh, will be solved instantly and that it will be instantly commercially viable, so on and so forth. These are technologies that will be refined over time, but the combination of AI, quantum computing, and all of these other technologies will form compounding returns. So what I mean by that is that we will have this kind of snowball effect, this accumulation where they start feeding off of each other in a virtuous cycle or a positive feedback loop. And that is the fourth industrial revolution. And that is why it is so exciting. And that is why I have rebranded my channel to be navigating the fourth industrial revolution. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. Cheers. Have a good day.